Okay, first stop here at Malibu Lagoon is where the observation area. Um, I would first say, uh, take a look at this area. This is designed specifically for outreach and engagement. As we look up here, we have some shade, which is great. So we have multi, um, uh, multiple things going on here simultaneously. So this is a nice shade. When it's hot here, you can be out here in the shade. That's great. Secondly, this is going to mimic uh, some kelp patties, right? Some offshore uh, marine environment. So we can talk about that. It's an educational thing. We can also talk about, if we look over right here, this little area where, where kids could come and sit. We could put up microscopes or whatever. It's concrete, which is great. But also right in here, in each each of the, uh, the, the, the tops, are different examples of some of the primary producers and some of the critters that are around here. So we have sycamore leaves. We have uh, macrocystis fronds from offshore. We have some uh, tracks from wading birds, right? So, so even here, which is just a, a quote unquote, just a sitting area, this area has been impregnated with all types of learning opportunities. This is a great place to bring people to start a tour, particularly for younger folks or people that aren't that familiar with, with what is a, a wetland ecosystem or what is this coastal ecosystem. So there's been a lot of thought placed into this. The next thing I'll say is if we look over here, there's all kinds of places to stop and sit. But because we have issues with homeless folks and people sort of squatting for long periods of time, if you look, the chairs are not are designed to be hard to sleep in long term. So they're not just regular bench seats. They're angled such that you can sit down, but after but you can't quite prop your head up and, and things of that nature. So there's a lot of design issues here, um, specifically trying to deal with the um, the, the the situation uh, as presented here in in this year in Malibu Lagoon in California uh, right now. Okay. Uh, so so, so that, that's, that's this, this first interpretation center. Then from here, as we start to look out over these lobes, um, I'm not going to talk about the history of the site right here. I'm just going to say what we see right now. So what we see is we go from a devegetated middle of the channel or middle of the lagoonal area. Off to the left is the main channel. That's where the, the, the riverine system is, and that's where it shoots straight out to the ocean. This is sort of an off pocket, a side pocket, if you will, of the water. Um, there are very few direct hydrological inputs on this side of, the, of Malibu Lagoon. Anything we see here is basically coming from rainwater and surface water runoff, but it's relatively small. Okay, so we have the, the, the devegetated main water area. As we come up towards us or the other side, actually, let's look right here. As you come to the side, we see areas that start to get shallower and flat. Then we start to see algal blooms or, or algal colonizations, diatomaceous films are, are colonizing those mud flats. And as we come closer up, we get into the, the actual edges of the lagoon, devegetated at first, and then we start to see things. Then we start to see um, uh, the first layer of, of vegetation. We see some of our classic zonation. So we're going into scurpus, bulrush, these, these uh, uh, classic um, wetland species. And then we, we really rapidly start to transition to terrestrial. So right here, from we have waters with the current situation today as we're recording this in early October uh, 2020. It's uh, standing water and then only about two meters of mud fl of, of uh, uh, devegetated mud flat area. Then we get into the vegetated, the first vegetated zone. But very quickly, with an elevational change of only about three, four feet, we're all of a sudden we're into terrestrial. So we see that over there where, where we have sort of the transition vegetation. But then right here where we're maybe about 10 feet or so, right here is about 10 feet or so above the water, maybe a little teeny bit more, we're getting into um, actual uh, 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 terrestrial vegetation, right? So we have mule fat and we have um, weeds and we have coyote bush and we have all these these um, uh, uh, more more terrestrial uh, critters. So in a span of linearly, in a span of just about uh, uh, 20 meters or so, or less than that, we've gone from uh, you know fully aquatic to fully terrestrial. And as we look around the edge, we see that that, that varies. So here we have uh, you know this situation going around the edge, but we also have right there is essentially an island, right over there, which can be a little bit hard to see from this angle, but we'll see it later, uh, a little island. Uh, why might islands be important? Those are important if we want to have some birds out there breeding and we want to try to minimize the amount of feral cat predation or, or other types of terrestrial predators. Having these little pockets where people can't easily get to and disturb them or predators can't easily get to and disturb them, that can be really helpful. Um, so yeah, so okay, so, so th this section is really the, the area that is the um, uh, low flow 
uh, non-main channel area of Malibu Lagoon.